Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Uh, my name is Mehir Gultursun. Uh, I try to explain my all horrible story in Chinese concentration camp. It's my broken English, but my English is not very good, but I try to explain. <laughs> and I am first, thanks for my Allah give me as a second chance to for life. And then thanks, thanks for all Muslim brother and the sister here, stay with us and uh, protect all Uyghur Muslim. Yeah, I I born in uh, East Turkestan, an Uyghur homeland. Until ten years old, I studied with Uyghur student, Uyghur language, and then from when I have ten years old, then Chinese uh, Communist Party sent me to China city Guangzhou. From my homeland to Guangzhou is uh, two thousand seven hundred mile far away. They sent me to the Chinese city with Chinese students together study high school, university, and uh, in China by Chinese language, Chinese history. So I stayed 10 years in China city without my parents in school, uh, high school, university, and 10 years in China. After when I have 20, uh, 20 years old, I apply for high um, bachelor degree for outside China. So I choose to coming to Egypt in England University in Cairo. So when I came in Egypt, first year I study by Arabic language and then after another four year I study with my business class. So uh, so 20, 2012, I don't know what it's, that time I, I met my husband in Egypt, he is Egyptian, so we get married. So 2015, when I was 25 years old, I become triplet mother. I have triplet one time, two boy, one girl. She born in Egypt, Cairo. When my kid is two months old, so my parents always calling me to come back to visit them. So because we have in Muslim men have baby coming, so we have like Zafa, some party. So I go back to my hometown with my three children with Egyptian passport. I was in Chinese passport. So of course my husband to apply also come with me to China, but Chinese embassy only give my three kids Chinese visa, but they didn't approve for my husband Chinese visa. And we don't know why. So I think, okay, my husband can waiting after that come to take us from China. So I take my three kids and me, we go back to China. It's 2015, May 12th. When I just arrived to China airport, so in Chinese, uh, in Urumqi airport, the so Chinese uh, police asked me to have, they have some question want to ask me. So I go to, and with Chinese police, so they are taking from me my three kids away. I need to ask them where they are taking, but they don't want to answer. In airport, three hours, they ask me a lot of question why I, can't, I go to Egypt. They know why I go to Egypt. I go to study. I, give, I take a student visa. And then they ask me a lot of questions about three hours. After three hours, I ask them where is my kids because they are only two months old. I give them breastfeeding and they need to un eat or changing diaper something. But I ask always, they don't answer. They ask, they, they all tell me only answer our question. You don't can you cannot ask for us any qu question. Then after three hours, the one Chinese man coming suddenly stake my mouth and they give my head black hood, give my hand hand cup, take me to from airport. So when I go to airport, so police car, uh, in, enter the police car inside, they push me strongly. I fall down and they broke in my nose. I need to scream, but I cannot because they stick my mouth. From that time, until more than two months, I spent the Chinese camp without, I don't know where's my three kids and my parents or my husband. Nobody visit me, nobody come to see me or search me, but this uh, more than two months, every two days, he take me to outside question room, question, and I have a lot of torture, beating, something. After two months, they told me, 
you kids have sick, so we let you to permit time to go outside free from prison. But of course, uh, two police, Chinese police, with me 24 hour. Where I going, they, get, they come with me together. Of course, they take my Chinese ID and the passport, my cell phone. So they say I am in the blacklist person, dangerous person. So they can take me any time to prison, the camp. But now I am only permanent time because my kids are outside. So I cannot contact with anybody. I cannot use a cell phone. If I need anything, I will tell the behind with me to, to police. So that day I go to a Chinese hospital in Urumqi, children hospital. And I, I see my uh, one son, Moise, and the daughter, Elena, they had big surgery from their neck. And the health is very, very bad condition. And they gave me another, my son, Mohammed, his dead body. They say, your son is dead morning because we gave him surgery. <laughs> It's all total five months I didn't see my kids. I didn't know what happened for them. And until now, I have questioned why they are doing surgery for my kids. I am 25 year old. This is my first kids. I am very excited. I have triplet. I have very big dream. Take care of them. But they take this chance from me. After that, they gave my kids dead bodies. They let me go out from hospital. Any doctor, anybody cannot tell me what happened. They don't want to answer my question. And the police want me to close my mouth, shut my mouth, don't speak anybody, go out from hospital. So that time, my mom, my dad was me. We want to take care of this dead body baby. We don't know what we're doing. We want to take the kids to, of course, in Muslim. If anybody die, we take them to his gazette for the masjid, pray. In our country, no. That time, I want to take kids. I tell a lot of people, please, I can pay money, take my kids to masjid, pray, jenazah. They are not accept. They are not accept. So I want to take my kids to for put any qabra. They don't want me allowed to put any cover. Where I go in this dead body, I try to let my kids wake up. He cannot. Finally, I find the one Uyghur guy. He gave me secretly his mother cover behind a small place. Want me to put the kids here. Of course, that time three police car with me, with my mom. With me, don't want us to pray or make any dua for kids. We put my my son in this cabra without any pray, any dua. This is very hard for me. This is my first kids in my life. So after that, we go back to turn off to Charchan, my hometown Charchan from Urumqi as the capital city. Charchan is a small city. From Urumqi to Charchan, two days drive car. 205. 2,500 miles far away. So when I go to Cherjan, again, they take me to camp. So from 2015 to until 2018, I have spent 13 months in total in the camp. But another time is this switch me a lot of different camp and sometime in a hospital because I am in three months. I witnessed with me same cell, uh, nine women dead. They take this dead body like something bad animal like that. But a lot of women every day, they take the, from the camp. A lot of, take a lot of women outside and a lot, another new woman coming. The outside woman, they are not come back. We don't know what happened for them. And this camp condition is very bad. We cannot drink water. We cannot shower. We cannot go outside from the one room. All women. We are shave, they are shave our ha hair and we have, everyone have handicap. We are still like waiting what time is coming to our dead turn. We don't have any no news what time we're gonna go outside. So because this bad condition, um, I lost my memory, I fell down. Then after, uh, when I wake up, I was in the RMG hospital. Of course, they gave my hand this handicap. 
and the two police with my uh, behind my bed. They give me a lot of medicine every every week one time, and every week one time they give me injection. But we don't know what this medicine, what this injection. After when I my health little bit become good, they take me to again the cell 2017 October. Then they give me one paper, want to me sign, and that time is they give to change my prison clothes. Actually, our uh, the camp clothes is blue color, Chinese all same. After that, they change for me orange color clothes. So they told me so I this time is I getting bad sentences. So because I am very have a terrorist mind, because I go to Egypt, I start wear hijab, I study pray. So I am living with Muslim people. Maybe I have terrorist mind, so I get death sentences. So they told me to sign paper to for my two kids because the Chinese only writing Moaz and Elena, my two kids' name. That not writing father name. They want me writing father name for them. After that, I uh, reject. I say uh, my kid is born in Egypt. I don't have two kids. I have triplet. You killed one of my kids, so the two kids you must be before you kill me to return back to Egypt. If you don't return back, one day the Egypt government will search where the kids. So after this shock, they ask a lot of uh, the Egyptian embassy in China search about everything. After three months, the Chinese uh, uh, police very upset come to the camp to want me take outside. I think uh, this time is maybe they will take me to go to that because they give me three option. When I have to uh, that, I have only three option to choose. One is with gun shooting. One is give my gift for my body to for any hospital for using, or another was medicine. So if I choose with gun shooting, they must be shoot me three gun. Every one shooting, I need to pay six hundred RMB before I dead. So I let him to whatever you tell me, you can choose. But this is either uh, Rabbana, yani hand of Allah. So after that, of course, in the prison is very horrible. I, I stay. In, I we cannot pray. We cannot do anything. But I know Allah can see our heart. He can feeling. I pray a lot. I'm only twenty seven year old. I die, okay, but what what can do my kids? Please help me, give me one chance to take care of my kids. I pray a lot. Alhamdulillah, Allah give me one second life, time to for uh, life. After the Chinese government, the 27, 2018 January coming, they very upset to take me to outside from the jail. They say they want me to go to police station. When I go to police station, I'm shocked. I see a lot of Egyptian government people and my husband there. They coming to take off uh, my kids. They want me son. So my husband tells them to my kids is three, not two. Where is one of them? They say we don't know. We don't know your another one kids because your wife only come to China with two kids. They are reject. Inshallah, I will one day to all world knows. So when I when I speak to to Egyptian government and my husband coming to China to help uh, pick us, so that time yeah. So Chinese government, of course, doesn't kill me. They take me to Chinese office. Then I met my husband. The Egyptian government is there in China. So after when I go to police office, my husband of course search ask the Chinese police. My kids is three, not two. Where is one? One kids. They told them we don't know. Until now, they are talking the old news. Every video they say Mihrigo have only two kids. He we don't know one kids. After two years, they say Mihrigo have one kids in Turkey. Two kids with them in in America. How one one mother he has he brings his kids, and if his kid is alive, tell whole world that my kid is dead. So Allah knows that, inshallah. So 
Then my husband asked this, and they told them, the Chinese government told them, we don't know another kids, we have only two kids. So after my husband said, okay, when I go to Egypt, I will tell all international court about Chinese government, what they're doing for my, for my son. So they, they tell my husband, shut your mouth, don't say anything, but if you accept, don't say anything, so in world, in the news, we can give you your wife. So after my husband take my kids and me, so 2018, April 16, we left from China. Safety. Of course, when we in uh, Beijing airport, four time Chinese police try to uh, don't let us to go airplane. They stopped our ticket. One day have have problem. Second day because every time international airport airplane because two kids and the husband and me a lot of expensive. Of course, they are not reason, but police doesn't let us to pass go. Last time he tell my husband, this woman is very dangerous, he cannot go out from China. Uh, how much money you want to get, we can pay for you. But don't take this woman outside from China. Then my husband, he scream in the airport, after that he left us to go out from China. When I just go from out China to we just arrive Egypt airport. So when I go out from Egypt airport, the Egyptian Please catch my husband. They say your wife is Chinese, but you, he get married with Egyptian. You're, any Chinese cannot stay in Egypt anymore because in Egypt government with Chinese government have they have negotiation. I don't know have some contract something. Uh, before I I come to China uh, when I was 2017 I was in China. So is this in Egypt, of course, have a lot of Uyghur students study in Azhar University. The 2017, the return, Egyptian government returned 370 Uyghur to return back to China. Because this reason, they are saying uh, Egyptian government can good with good friendship with Chinese. So they, they let me go out from China to for permanent time. But when I come to Egypt airport 2018 April with my husband and my two kids, they let me they, they let me go out from airport, enter I Cairo inside, but don't want me and my husband uh, go with me. The police take my husband. They they want to have some check out. But after I I stay my husband parents home about fifteen days. Every day the police Chinese Egyptian police coming to search ask about me. So that meaning is they must be I must be returned back to China. So that time I contact with my parents in China. So my parents say, please come back China. If you want to see us, if you want to save us, please come back China. But when your kids grow up, then I understand because they cannot speak anything to t give us any information. They listen to phone everything. So that time I understand I cannot go. If I go, they will kill me, of course. And then when I left from China that time, they take from my Family 26 people, my father, mother, sister, and the brother to, to, to prison. So we have a, a like contract. If I come back, they can release from my family 26 people. If I don't come back, they will kill them. But after my parents talk to me, don't think about us. Please come back to China. But when your kids grow up, that meaning is don't come. Because they will kill me also, they can whatever they do for my family. So after that, I cannot stay in Egypt. I cannot go back to China. I don't have any document and my husband not with me. So I try to, uh, before I die, share all my story, whole world. But no one believe me. I try to go to Turkey. I cannot, I don't have document. Then I go to American embassy. I told them I am not. Egyptian, I am not Chinese, I am Uyghur, I have stayed this horrible life in camp. We have this, is, I tell all my story. Then U.S. Embassy uh, let me to stay in the hotel after they search all my information. Then they, they believe me and they, they have true document, everything is hand. After that, they helped me to with my two kids and me, 2018. September, bring me U.S. as a refugee. But until now, I am here with my two kids free. And of course, my two kids is disabled, not healthy. And when I was camp, they, they give me electric torture and they 
before I go from China camp, they give me soldiery sterilize. I cannot have any more baby. I cannot hear from my right ear. I lost hearing. And my health also still have some problem because they give me a lot of injection and the medicine. So about near to five years, I stay here with my two kids, without husband, without my father, my mother, and the sister brother. I don't know where they are. They are alive or no. I miss them. I, I miss their voice. Sometimes my kids ask me, everyone have daddy? We don't have daddy, mommy. Why we are alone? But I told them, we are a big family. A lot of Muslims with us. When I go everywhere speech, I see some big guys. I, I search my father's face from there. I search my sister's face. When I see a lot of women, I think they are my sister. They have someone with my mom. I cannot find them. But Alhamdulillah, everywhere because Allah loves me here. Allah protect me. Allah give me second chance. But I cannot stop because I have horrible life in concentration camp. I witness a lot of women die. So I need to be voice from them. And I am here. So tell them, tell you all guys, please protect Uyghur. Do whatever you do. Do Try to make any action to stop China doing for genocide Uyghur. And uh, thank you so much. Pray for us. Thank you so much.